All right, we have an omnidirectional robot here. We have three motors, all driving three omnidirectional wheels, all 120 degrees apart. All right, that will give us three degrees of freedom. If I switch the robot on here. So one degrees of freedom, it's forwards and backwards in the Y axis. Another degrees of freedom is side to side in the X axis. Then the last degrees of freedom is rotation between the two axes. We can program it to do combinations of all of it. So it's going forward in the Y and rotating. Here it's going straight sideways and rotating. So that's doing motions in two degrees of freedom at the same time. We can program it to do any combinations of any of those three degrees of freedom. But the case is, how do we do that? Now, how this uh, robot will move will be in the direction of the resultant forces, i.e. we add up all the forces, will tell us what it's going to do. Right, so we want to find how much X component that one makes, how much X component that one makes, and how much X component that one makes. We're going to find out how much Y component that one makes, how much Y component that one makes, how much Y component that one makes, and makes and also we call the rotation w we need to know how much rotational force each one of those make to make it rotate okay a bit of revision of trigonometry right the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse the opposite will be how much force in the y direction and the hypotenuse is how much force the motor is putting in the cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse where the adjacent is how much force is in the x-axis, and of course the hypotenuse is how much force the motor is putting in. So we can look at sine theta as opposite over hypotenuse, which is the x-axis force over the motor force. So if we want to find the y-axis force by itself, we can multiply both sides by the motor force. So we end up sine theta multiplied by motor force equals the force on the y-axis. We can do the same with cos. Um, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is how much force is in the x-axis. The hypotenuse is how much force the motor is making. So again, to get the x-axis by, x by itself, we'll multiply both sides out by motor. And we have cos theta multiplied by motor equals the force in the x-axis. Okay, how much the robot's going to move in the x-axis will be a case of just adding up all the forces that are in the direction of the x-axis. How much the robot's going to move in the y-axis will be a case of adding up all the forces that are acting in the y-axis. And how much the, ro the robot's going to rotate in W will be a case of adding up all the forces that are trying to twist it in W. Right, so we know if we're going to add up all the force directions, we need to add up how much motor 1 makes, how much motor 2 makes, how much motor 3 makes. So we know how much force it's going to make in the x-axis will be the cos of the direction it faces multiplied by its force. So motor 1 is in 240 degrees, so cos 240 multiplied by motor 1. Motor 2 is in 120 degrees, so cos 120 multiplied by motor 2. And the last motor is in the 0, so it's going to be cos 0 multiplied by motor 3. Right, the y-axis is going to be the same thing, but using sine. That's just what we did before. Now how much it actually rotates, you can see each force is actually perfectly in the rotating direction, because that's the point you're going to rotate around. And that force is 90 degrees to the point of rotation. So whatever force you have on those is going to rotate. So we know that the force in W will be 1 times motor 1 plus 1 times motor 2 plus 1 times motor 3 will give you the force in the rotation. So basically we have three equations now, which if we set a certain motor speed, we can calculate out how much it's going to move in the X, the Y and the Z. But that's not what we want. We want, if we're after a certain x, y, and z, what do we need to so, uh, set each motor for? So basically, we have to solve for the motors these three simultaneous equations. There's two ways of doing it. One is by using algebra, which is doable but fairly difficult. I find for, for a large simultaneous equation like this, matrices is probably a little bit easier. So I'm going to put them all in a matrix down here. So we basically said that this here I'll put in this vector, is going to be equal to these two together. Now, if you find if you do the matrix multiplication of those two, 
you'll get exactly that. So we need the dot product of that vector by that vector. So that will be cos 240 multiplied by motor 1 plus cos 120 multiplied by motor 2 plus cos 0 multiplied by motor 3. Exactly what we get on the top there. You'll find the same when we do the dot product of that. And when we do the dot product of that, we get exactly that. So that is just the matrice form of those equations there. Okay, so we have a matrix. If we put in a certain amount of powers, we can multiply it out and work out the output. We want the other way around, so we need to get the motors by themselves. The easiest way to do that, if we multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse matrix of A, what will happen is if you, on this side here, if you have the inverse of A multiplied by A, you get the identity matrix. Any time the identity matrix multiplies by anything else, you just get itself. So on this side, this will disappear, and you'll end up on this side, the inverse of A multiplied by that. Now, working out the inverse of A is quite hard. We're going to do it in a little bit. For the moment, we're just going to make up this matrix, and we don't know what A, B, C, D, E, F is. We're just going to write it like that. We'll end up with the inverse of A multiplied by that will equal that. We can multiply this out. We can do the multiplication of this one here. You'll end up with the matrix of that vector multiplied by that vector, that vector with the dot product of that vector, and that vector will be the dot product of that. Coming across here really nicely, it'll be A by Fx plus B by Fy plus C of Fw, D times Fx, E, and so on. So we can now actually multiply these out here, and you'll get motor 1 will be equal to A by F of X, plus B by F of Y, plus C of that. Motor 2 is like that, the same thing. So now we just have to work out what these values of this inverse actually are. Okay, here's the formula for finding the inverse matrix of a 3 by 3. So if we have this 3 by 3, this is actually the inverse out there. So it's all of this that calculates out of that, divided by the determinant. All right? Now, instead of doing this manually, this is done very easy by a computer. What I'll do is I'll put the values for the input, A, B, C, D, which is that, and then I'll use the computer to calculate that out. Now this is a little extract from the program that was actually running there. Right, so we have fill the input matrix. A is equal to cos 240, B is equal to cos 120, C is equal to that, um, sign like that, so you understand that's our input. That's exactly like that. And we're going to calculate the, the determinant. So the determinant is that across there, which of course is that bit there. That's the determinant. So we calculated the determinant. So then we're going to calculate the inverse, which is going to be that divided by the inverse, which is that divided by the inverse. We have that, which is going to be B divided by the determinant, which is going to be that divided by the determinant and so on. So you can see I have calculated out the inverse there. Right, so I have a program. You can see before that's the um, x direction, the y direction, the w direction. First off it set the x speed is 0, the y speed is 70, and the w speed at 0. Weighted 3 sextons. Then it set the x is 0, the y is negative 70 and 0 because it drove forwards and backwards when you watch the demo at the start of the, this video. Then it went sideways and back. So you can see it goes sideways, 0, 0. So that's the x, y is 0, z is 0. Then negative x comes back. Then what it did is it rotated around the spot in the w, not moving at all and back. Then after that, I did a nice little bit where I went forward and rotated at the same time. Then another little bit where I went sideways and rotated at the same time. So that's the little program that was running in there. And when I do it, I need to, uh, I'm calling the set robot speed, which is this function. You pass in the X speed, you pass in the Y speed, you pass in the W speed. So it's gonna set the motor speed of motor one to the A inverse multiplied by the X speed plus the B inverse multiplied by the Y speed plus the C inverse multiplied by the W speed. And then motor two is gonna be that, 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 which is exactly what we worked out before here, what we're calculating up there. All right, and that gets you to the finished product you want.